The reason for being here in Amsterdam, having a meeting, is by SCORE, Scientific Committee on Oceanic Research, which works on planktic foraminifera and ocean changes. So people from different countries of the whole world are here, from Taiwan, from South Africa, providing knowledge and ideas and also setting signs in the future for the young generation to come. If we want to understand how the climate and the ecosystems are going to change in the future, we need to know what is the baseline variability, how the climate systems and the ecosystems in the ocean are reacting to change, and unfortunately our historical records are simply too short. We need to look over time periods of hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, millions of years, and for that we need some kind of a recorder of the conditions and events in the past. And uh, this recorder, in our case planktonic foraminifera, doesn't have it written on themselves. What was the temperature of the ocean, what was the pH of the ocean, etc. And we use this information as a proxy, an indirect way of reconstructing the past climate. The reason we study plankton is to get a firm understanding of how the base of the marine food chain operates. The plankton contain a very interesting archive of environmental information incorporated into organisms that grow shells such as foraminifera and pteropods and coccolithophorids allow us to reconstruct what the environment of the ocean was like in times past. It's remarkable if you look at the size of these tiny little animals they are less than half a millimeter they are barely visible by by naked eye and yet by an analysis of only a few shells of these organisms you can tell the state of the global climate, how much ice was on land, uh, locked in the ice sheets, what was the global temperature, what was the pH of the oceans and thereby the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. The primary mission of the last 30 years of culturing of these organisms is to develop the calibrations and the tools, the proxies, so to speak, that allow us to reconstruct ocean temperatures, to salinity, pH, things like that with a very high degree of confidence. The reason we go to the Wrigley Marine Science Center is because it uh, provides access to deep water, which is necessary if you want to work with uh, planktonic foraminifera. Also, there is a fantastic infrastructure, and the abundance of the forums is high enough that you can go after them diving. Organisms such as foraminifera are at the fingertips of divers and, and, and they can collect these organisms just by looking in the water column up in the upper one or two meters and bring them back into the laboratory within a half hour. We're one of the few groups that cultures foraminifera live in the laboratory and we are part of the only group that collects them via scuba diving. Based on the discoveries that we've made over the last 10 or 15 years, which effectively has been about every three or four years we make a major discovery out here. And, and I think that the elemental composition of foraminifera uh, is going to play a very prominent role in those future discoveries that are being made. You know, we're just sort of carrying the torch and uh, training the, the next generation of planktonic foram hunters. The graduate students have this opportunity to really make a difference, work on a project that has that fundamental science and research foundation that they know you know their research could move a field forward. Students change when they, they spend a month out here in the field with us. I've never seen so many dolphins, <laughs> or four amps. <laughs> Yes.